All right, so today I'm going to be talking about using comics to teach literary devices. Um, now, the reason why I chose this as my topic for my video is that um, I teach English language development in high school, and a lot of the problems that these students have um, are that they just can't really um, connect with a text, especially text with a lot of figurative language. Um, so having these visual um, representations or uh, visual versions of text really help them. Um, so today I'm going to be showing examples and I'm going to be talking about a few different literary devices. Um, and not all of them, just because that would be too long of a video, but I'll just talk about some of the important ones. Um, all right, so today I'm going to be discussing tone, symbolism, mood, and metaphor. And in each of those, I'm going to be giving some examples as well as a definition of each of those literary terms. Um, and again, I'll give examples using um, comics or certain images that would work for those literary devices. All right. Um, do you have any questions so far? All right, cool. Okay, so first, tone. So the definition of tone is that in a written composition, is it's the attitude of a writer towards a subject or an audience. Uh, tone is generally conveyed through the choice of words or the viewpoint of a writer on a particular subject. Now, a common problem that a lot of students have with tone, um, they a lot of times can't really distinguish the difference between tone and mood. And visually, um, there are some ways to do that. Now, if you're teaching uh, comics, one example that I'm giving for tone is this comic. So this video is also going to kind of be a way for me to just show off uh, work from different artists. Um, and just gonna, it's going to kind of just seem uh, like it's going to be half um, edu an educational tool, but also half just like showing off cool artwork. So first off with tone, um, there's a comic called Deadly Class. Now, if we look at Deadly Class, and the, uh, sorry for the, the reversal here. But this is just the cover of the comic or the graphic novel. And in this cover, we notice that the colors are very uh, monochromatic, just the blues, the whites, and the blacks. It's a lot of shadow in it. Um, but if we look inside of the comic, um, we notice kind of a color that we are not really used to seeing in such work. So for example, um, this is to juxtapose so the tone, the author's tone towards the subject, and the subject of this book um, is violence, uh, and uh, it's, it's basically an assassination story, um, but they're using these fun colors to juxtapose it. They're using that, that palette to juxtapose a serious nature of the comic. Now, in that way, the tone um, is really conveyed by the artist, and they want you to see that it's serious, but both both serious and fun. In contrast to that, there's a comic here that I have called Green Arrow. It's a, it's a DC comic, but this comic uses tone in a different way. In this comic, we can see that all the colors are really washed out, um, and they use a color palette of like the same few colors. So as we see here, the whole layout and all of the pages in this issue just really use like yellows, sepias, uh, blacks, and browns, and that's on purpose. So the tone there that the, the artist is trying to set um, is that there's, serious, there's a seriousness with, without really any room of it for interpretation. The muted color palette just shows you exactly what they want to show you. The story is serious, the story is gritty, um, and then both of those examples of tone um, just use like a cinematic um, the ordering of the images as well. Okay. And that's for tone. Do you have any questions for tone so far? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is symbolism. Symbolism, you can really, um, you can really have fun with comics, especially because it's, it's really image-based. So for symbolism, the actual definition is the use of symbols to signify ideas and qualities by giving them symbolic meanings that are different from their literal sense. And a common problem that a lot of students have with symbolism is detaching the literal from the figurative. So one example that I chose to show today, and it's from another uh, like mainstream comic. This is a Superman comic. Uh, it's called All-Star Superman. However, in this comic, um, he, the, 
the writer does choose to use a lot of symbolism and a lot of allusions. So for example, there's a biblical allusion here. And then there's also a biblical symbolism in this image here of Superman. And in this image, Superman is holding the world in his hands, um, much like the uh -huh. song. So like he has the whole world in his hands. It's to say that he is godlike. Um, and also, it's, it's just to symbolize uh, that he's, a, he's here to help. He's here to uh, be like a savior for the earth. And it's not to be taken literal. He's not literally holding the earth, but it's just a, a symbolic image to kind of uh -huh. give the readers have a better understanding of that character. Um, this, I actually really recommend this, this comic. It's called All-Star Superman. Um, it's, it uses a lot of different like uh, illusions and symbolism. Um, there's a lot of biblical ones too. There's like the, um, the Joseph and the multicolor coat reference. There's a lot of different stuff too, and a lot of historical reference as well. All right, so the third um, literary device that I'm gonna be talking about is mood. So in literature, mood is a literary element that evokes certain feelings or video or vibes in readers through words and descriptions. Um, and the com common problem with that too, again, is differentiating between mood and tone. So as in with tone, it's the author's purpose of making something a certain way. And in mood, it's how the reader interprets. So that's, that's a big difference in that. And I'm giving two examples of this. The first example is a comic called Batman Arkham Asylum. Again, this is a mainstream comic, but it's very different than most mainstream comics. Um, as you can see in the cover, it already seems kind of off and wacky and um, just kind of dark. So the whole, well, so this is actually a graphic novel um, because it's one, uh, one story told uh, within a series. It's, it's about, it's about 60, no, it's about 70 pages actually. And if you can see in the artwork here, it's very dark, very drab. Everything is painted. Um, it's all in watercolor. Um, it's not usually uh -huh. when comics are done. And this is to show that um, there's, there's really just like a sense of, of fear and a sense of macabre um, to this whole comic itself. And that's the feeling that the reader gets, that the reader's supposed to be getting. Um, and to compare that, I chose a very um, pop culture uh, pop art kind of comic, and this is Madman. So in this comic, the mood is basically the complete opposite of the Batman one. Uh, it's very whimsical. If you can see in the images here, um, everything is, uh, it basically looks like a cartoon. And it's to give the readers a sense of whimsy and a sense of um, just like child, childish awe the whole time. And this, this artist is known for doing that as well. Um, all the comics that he creates, uh, the visuals are really like a throwback to like the 1930s, 1940s comics. Everything's really wholesome. Everything's just really um, bright color palettes and a lot of primary colors. And then finally, which is probably my favorite literary device to work with comics, is metaphor. Um, and it's the hardest one for students to really grasp. So metaphor is a figure of speech that makes an implicit, implied, or hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated, but which share some common characteristics. In other words, um, it's a resemblance of two contradictory or different objects um, that is made based on a single or some common characteristics. And a big problem that people have with metaphors or students have with metaphors is getting them to understand the meaning behind those comparisons. Uh, that's really the thing that, that as a teacher, it's hard to kind of get the students to produce on their own. Um, and I chose probably one of the best metaphors, at least in, in um, popular comics or uh, like really... Um, like well-known comics. And I chose the Incredible Hulk for this, and I'm using two different examples of it. Um, so one, uh, this is like the original Incredible Hulk run from Stanley in the 1960s. And right off the bat, he already knew that the Incredible Hulk was a metaphor. Uh, he was a metaphor for man versus nature. Um, and it takes a lot from uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is also the same metaphor of man versus nature. So it's just reusing it, but using it um, visu in a visual sense. As we can see in this image here of Bruce Banner transforming from his uh, normal human self into the Hulk, um, it's really just showing that that juxtaposition of um, man versus nature and just trying to like control their animalistic urges. And that was even in the '60s, but now in the current day, um, in the current comics, they do the same thing with the Hulk, but now they kind of just ramp it up to eleven. 
So as we see here, this is Immortal Hulk. This is a this is the most recent Hulk run. As we see here, the Hulk is still um, going from from like a man to a beast, but now he's really just exerting um, like grotesque and radiation. He has like five heads. He's all over the place, um, and it's just going wild with the metaphor here. Um, yeah. So are there any questions so far? Yeah, so I used to teach ELD also. So do you use these for your, your newcomers or do you use them for your more advanced ELDs? So I use them, um, my curriculum, I have to create my own curriculum because they actually don't even have like anything that they assign us. So for my ninth graders, I have them read Miss Marvel, um, which is, uh -huh. and I haven't read like the first five or six issues. Um, and it's it's just like a like a story of a, of a young girl, she's um, she's American, but her family are from Pakistan, and everything that she does, it's like a metaphor for change and a metaphor for um, for acceptance and identity. I have them read that; they really enjoy it. And then for my older students, I use comics more as a supplement. So I'll supplement, like for example, if they're reading in history class about World War II, I have them read a series um, called Magneto Testament, which is five issues, um, and it's just like uh, the story of one one child during the Holocaust, um, just so they can get that, 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 uh, that context visually. Uh -huh. and, then, and again, like for the older students, I'll do it like supplemental. So for example, if they're reading Macbeth, I'll have them, um, I'll accompany that with like the graphic novel version of Macbeth. Um, stuff like that seems to really help. Um, so I went to, I went to a, a, a library conference and uh, some man talked to us about comics and graphic novels and he said, Macbeth and Batman. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know that like, you can use that. I mean, I'm not really into comics, so I don't know that much about comics, but you seem to be you know a lot about them. But anyway, so just you know, the, yeah. there's the contemporary Macbeth. <laughs> yeah. If you're looking for like, if you're looking for like a metaphorical, like a visual metaphor, comics are great because everything is like everything's a version of something else. Um, even like. Like the biblical ones are the easiest ones to do. So, like for example, um, Superman would be like well, Superman is basically Jesus and Moses put together. The same, it's a, it's the same story. Um, both people are like both people are found as babies, raised by somebody else, uh -huh. taught to love um, the people that they're around with, even though they're not of them, but they become of them. Um, it's the same story. Tarzan. It's all they all, they're all like that. They're all basically just yeah retellings of a, of a single story kind of thing but yeah um yeah it works out really well for for my uh for my eld students they really like it um and for the lower readers like the ones that read like at like maybe ninth graders that read like at a third grade level um having them right. read comics is really how they boost them up to like that sixth grade seventh grade level fast um because they go from reading nothing to reading something they enjoy yeah and I'm trying to build up my graphic novel section for my students because um, we have a, um, I think the average reading level at our school is fourth grade. So, um, yeah. But like I said, I taught ELD and I have the ELD ones and twos and advanced ELDs. So, yeah, I think it's a great tool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you for being part of this, part of this uh, um, live stream. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Was that was that it for today? I'm sorry, one more time. Do you have any other questions or, or was that it? That was it, yeah. Okay. Again, yeah. thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining and um I hopefully learn learn a little bit of something. Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right. Have a good evening. Thank you, thank you.